Welcome to Cumbria. Okay, hello guys. Welcome to my hometown of Carlisle. That's where I live. Only joking, that's Carlisle Castle. Okay, so really, really, really excited about this scooter. Spoiler alert, it's awesome. But to prove that, I'm gonna take it over to Rickaby Park where I'll be able to put this scooter through its paces. So, let's go. But first, here's an unboxing. Unboxing the e tau E2, GT, whatever it's called, feels like Christmas as a kid. It's packed neatly into a cool box and comes with a certificate of compliance, which is reassuring. Mmm, that new scooter smell. Also included is a rather large and noisy charger and the most basic instruction manual known to man, it's actually more of an instruction sheet. But thankfully, first impressions of the new scooter scream build quality. It's got real finesse and nice attention to detail that cements its place as a premium e-scooter. But who gives a damn what it looks and smells like? Let's take it for a ride. Under the hood, the E2 GT is powered by a new 700 watt motor and a 48 volt 10.5 amp hour battery with Samsung cells. Put these together and it's capable of carrying you as fast as 40 kilometers an hour and in ideal conditions, you could reach up to 50 kilometers without needing to charge. Very impressive for such a portable scooter like this. The GT is buttery smooth and quiet to ride. Even though it's got hard rubber tires, the excellent dual suspension smooths out any minor cracks and bumps in the road, no problem. The suspension's so good, in fact, you can even use it off-road. And even though the scooter can handle it, my camera can't. Ah, that's gonna cost me. Alrighty guys, welcome to the beautiful Rickaby Park here in Carlisle. Vast open green space with the river running through it. Perfect for testing an electric scooter. And the very, very first thing, the very first thing I want to show you is the top speed. It's pretty awesome. Okay, that was a rush. Very, very fast. As you can see, we did hit 40 kilometers an hour, which is 25 miles per hour. And never did I feel unsafe at those speeds. It feels very stable to ride, and the acceleration is very smooth and gradual. It feels almost like a spaceship, and it sounds like one too. But saying all that, it's all very fair and well traveling at 40 kilometers an hour, but what if you can't stop? Time for a brake test. Two, one, two. Excuse this terrible angle, but the wind is really getting out of hand here. And I just wanted to comment on water resistance. As you can see, Carlisle is very prone to flooding. One question I get very often is, can I use my electric scooter in the rain? And the answer is, just use your common sense. Electric and water doesn't mix. So, light rain is fine. Wet roads conditions are probably okay, but I would never go through something like that on my scooter or take it for a ride in heavy rain. Don't expect miracles. They are very water resistant, but not waterproof. Okay guys, let's talk quickly about braking. This scooter has electronic regen brakes, which aren't the best as you can see, but when you use a stomp brake, things get a little bit better. What do you think guys? Stomp brake! Yeah. Oh. All right, 
Okay, not the steepest hill in the world, but still a pretty steep hill that you'd certainly get a sore bum off if you walked up it. Um, and I have to say, the hill performance surprised me. It's ex exceptional. It really accelerates up the hills, which I didn't really expect. Certainly takes up a lot less space than a car, eh? One thing that I kind of tend to forget about talking about in these reviews is the folding mechanism. So I'm going to quickly talk about the folding mechanism. You could be forgiven for thinking the folding mechanism is a little bit flimsy because it's just so easy to use. The handlebars click neatly into the fender and crucially it's got those fantastic fold away handlebars which really adds to the portability of this scooter. It weighs 13.1 kilograms which is a little bit heavier than what I would have liked. And equally you don't have to be Albert Einstein to fold it up either. Back to London now. Okay, yeah, definitely time for a haircut. Okay guys, that was my first impressions review of the E2, E, Wow, GT, whatever it's called. Big thanks to Personal Electric Transport for lending me the scooter for this review. I have had a blast riding this scooter about town. I've been commuting with it since I got back to London and it's done really, really well. So it's an easy yes from me. It's basically got all the features that I would look for personally in electric scooter. It's fairly small, portable, it folds away, those handlebars fold away, fast, powerful, good on the hills, great range, we'll come to that later. And yeah, the, the, the start of the video really summed it up for me, the fact that I could take it on a train and stick it up top in the luggage rack is just, for me, a killer feature. And even though it's so portable, it doesn't compromise on performance. You you saw how fast it goes, you saw what it's like on the hills, and I can, and I can tell you it's an absolute joy to ride too. She flies like the wind. But unfortunately, I didn't manage to squeeze in a range test. Honestly, I probably would have been blown away by the wind. It was so windy that day. But I have been commuting with it in London and just the other day I managed 10 miles and I got back home with 60% battery which then popped back up to 70%. So 60 and 70% battery. But if you'd like to see a proper range test please leave a comment below otherwise you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But it's rated at 50 kilometers in perfect conditions. That's 30 miles so if you go ahead and half that due to real world conditions you get about 15 miles so until i do the range test you're probably looking at between 15 and 20 miles depending on your usage in the real world which i am more than happy with so saying all that is this the perfect scooter well well no i mean that doesn't exist does it obviously the brakes could be improved they're good enough. I haven't really felt the need to use the stomp brake on the back. But obviously these scooters keep getting faster and faster and the braking needs to keep up with that. The only e-scooters with electronic brakes that have been actually very good are the Yanagi and the Boosted scooter. So I'd love to see e Tau, E2 and the rest of the companies that make these kind of scooters catch up with them and make really good electronic brakes. And also, it's just a very simple scooter. It's got no app, it's got no GPS, there's no removable battery or even USB charging. There isn't even a bell. Well, there is a bell, there's a horn, but it's barely worth using. It sounds like this. See what I mean? But being simplistic, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, I guess there's less moving parts to go wrong. The performance is there and that's the main thing. However, there is the sticky talking point of the price. It's between 1100 and 1200 pounds here. Hopefully I'll have a discount code in the link below. 
And to be honest, before I opened it, I was like, nah, it, it can't be worth this, really. But after riding it, I have to say, I'm very much warming to the price tag. Because it ticks most of the boxes. It feels very rugged. The suspension is, is the best I've ever tried, in fact, on a scooter. Normal bumps that I would kind of brace myself for, bend my knees. I didn't even need to with this. So if you're adamant about good suspension, portability, you don't want any flat tyres, and you don't want to compromise on speed and power and hill performance, then you might as well go all in on, on the GT. You won't be disappointed and, and I love it. Just nitpicking, I would probably like to see a little bit more innovation in the next iteration of these sco scooters, but um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Anyway, there's much more to say. Um, but we'll save that for future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. It really helps the channel. Subscribe and put all those notifications on and all that. Um, and please check out the links below if you'd like to support the channel. It really does help and it means I can make more videos like this. Oh, and, and also let me know what you think this scooter should be compared to if I do a, a, a comparison video with this scooter because um, I would definitely like to do another video with it. Right. Ending the video here, these videos seem to be getting longer. Subscribe if you're new and we'll see you in the next one. Are you with me? Come on, guys! What a load of whippers!